Okay, this is the solution video for assignment three, the learning and reinforcement questions. The understanding extension questions will be in a PDF, just like assignment two. So of course the solution uh, PDF will be there for the learning and reinforcement questions too. So just watch the video if there is a specific question you didn't understand and want to see talked through. So the first question, draw a syntactic structure if the formula is well formed. Uh, one of these is good, one of these is bad. Uh, the first one is good. So we'll see how to draw that. And the second one is not good. So a couple hints here. Uh, there's two operators back to back that are binary operators. So the arrow and the conjunction. Uh, and also we're just missing some brackets here. So we don't know how all of these uh, atomic statements, i, j, and k join together. So how do we draw the structure for not, not f or not g and h? Well, uh, not not f is one well-formed formula or and then we have not g and h so we'll break these down into their three components we have not not f on the left we have or in the middle and that's connecting not g and h together uh, we can break not not f into not and then not f remember the unary uh, operator negation just attaches to one thing at a time so we do need to split this one at a time so not not f and then not f on the right side we get not and then g and h and then finally the and is combining g and h together so this is our tree structure for not not f or not g and h okay uh, the next question asks you to translate english into propositional logic i already have some keys defined and i'll talk about some things uh, that you may have done differently so the first one i asked about jeffrey but nobody knew anything so but is a conjunction here i asked about jeffrey i called j nobody knew anything i called n so my translation will be j and n uh, you might have done something different here because nobody uh, does have this negated quantifier in it propositional logic cannot cannot handle quantifiers so you might have done something and said uh, s uh, someone knew something and you might have translated this as j and not s uh, if you did this i'll accept this at this point um, but you could have just said nobody knew anything as an atomic statement um, because the negation was built into that quantifier word so that might have been a little bit more difficult than i intended it to be just because the system can't handle it um, so i'll accept either way but um, typically, we're just looking for not or it is not the case as a standalone word or phrase and not in some sort of uh, quantified word like nobody or nothing uh, when we talk about the negation as an operator in propositional logic. Okay, um, B. If neither, dog, if neither dogs bark at mailmen nor cats meow at mailmen, I will not know when the mailman comes. So this is a conditional, so we have an if-then. There's a then snuck in here. So we're gonna have an arrow. Uh, if neither dogs mark at mailmen nor cats meow at mailmen. So I have D, C for each of those. I will not know when the mailman comes. So that's the negation. Okay, so neither nor. Uh, this is going to be a case where we get not something or something. So if not D or C. And both of those are negated, so we have to have the negation outside the brackets there. Then I will not know when the mailman comes, so this is not I. So this is one way uh, to write this. We could also paraphrase this and say um, if dogs don't bark at mailmen and cats don't bark at mailmen, then I will not know when the mailman comes. So. Uh, both of these are just paraphrases of each other. You don't need both. You just need one of those. Uh, there's a couple other ways to paraphrase this, and I won't show them on screen, but whatever you write, I'll take a look at to see if there's an equivalent form for it. But uh, these would be the two ways of directly translating it. Uh, the first one would be how we saw it when we looked at um, set laws, when we looked at De Morgan's laws, and we said neither happy nor sad. And we said that was something like uh, neither happy nor sad was A or B complement. And this is uh, very similar to what we see here with not D or C. 
Okay. Uh, C was the only case of an ambiguous sentence. So it is not the case that if it rains, it pours. So let's just take a look at this. If it rains, it pours. So if R, then P. Okay, that part's straightforward. But what's tough here is the, ambigu is the ambiguity with it is not the case that. So either it is not the case that is talking about uh, the entire thing. So it's negating if it rains, it pours. So it's not the case that if it rains, it pours. Alternatively, if we remove these brackets here, it could just be saying it is not the case that if it rains, then it pours. So it could just be negating R there, it rains. So uh, it could just say not uh, if not R, then P. So this is ambiguous. So you would need to get both of those translations there. So this is usually what happens when you have it is not the case at a front of a sentence. Uh, normally you get multiple translations for these. Okay, uh, D, although Godzilla is a monster, Godzilla is a friendly creature and Godzilla does not attack cities. So I see a negation here, I see an and here, I see an although here, and this is just another form of and. So really we have Godzilla is a monster, that's M, friendly creature, I call that F, and attack cities, we call that A. So these are just a bunch of ands being strung together. So we could say this is M and F and not A, and we could move the brackets around. We could change how the M's, F's, and not A's are ordered. Uh, we could even remove the brackets entirely. But our system of propositional logic wants brackets in the sentence, so we should at least pair them together as two brackets. So we should have, um, you know, M and F together first, or F and not A together, or M and not A together, we should at least be bracketing them in pairs. So on the assignment, if you forget the brackets, that's fine, but on a test, please remember, um, two things should be bracketed together because the system says we need brackets. Okay, that one shouldn't have been too bad, it's just recognizing that although is a conjunction. Okay, E. In order to become a professor, it is necessary to receive a PhD and get lucky. So we don't have any subjects here, but we can say that there's this uh, hidden subject one or U, just a generic subject. So we'll do P for professor, R for receives PhD, and L for lucky. And I tell you there's a conditional here. In order to become a professor, you could have gotten it from that, but just to help you out, it's there. Now I give you a hint here. Because the main difficulty from this is to figure out which one is the antecedent. Is this P, then R and L, or is this R and L, then P? So is it the first one or is it the second one? And to figure this out, you have to ask yourself, in which situation do you get that one arrow zero gives you zero? So, it says in order to become a professor, it is necessary to receive a PhD and get lucky. So, what happens if I become a professor, but I don't receive a PhD and get lucky? In this case, if I become a professor, but I don't receive a PhD and get lucky, this should be false because I'm saying it's necessary to get a PhD and get lucky in order to become a professor. So this should be the correct translation based on what the sentence says. Because I'm saying if I become a professor, I need to get a PhD and get lucky. So if I become a professor, but I don't get a PhD and don't get lucky, then it comes out to be false. But in the other case, if I receive a PhD and get lucky, and I don't become a professor, this says that should be false, okay? But there's nothing in the sentence that says that if I get a PhD and get lucky, then I have to become a professor. It's completely okay for me to receive a PhD and get lucky and not become a professor. This condition should not be false.
it should be okay for that one to be true. Um, in, in other words, let's reverse it too. Let's ask ourselves, what happens if we do not receive a PhD and get lucky, but we do become a professor in that second condition? Well, what happens is this comes out to be true. I did not receive a PhD, I did not get lucky, but I became a professor in that second translation. But, but this doesn't make sense because this completely contradicts what E says. It says in order to become a professor, it is necessary to receive a PhD and get lucky. But this condition says I did not receive a PhD and did not get lucky, but I became a professor anyway. So this is not the correct translation for that sentence. Uh, this top one is. So for conditionals, we should be using the fact that a conditional is false when you have one arrow zero, when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false, in order to figure out uh, which case is the antecedent. So that was a little uh, tougher compared to the other translations, and conditionals are usually tough, especially when translating at first, um, but that's the strategy to figuring it out. So a little bit of exploration there, but uh, definitely doable. And hopefully that prompt helped a little bit. Okay, uh, the rest of this is just truth tables. So I've set these up. Um, hopefully you're able to figure out the syntactic structures and build these truth tables. So you had to build the truth table, uh, figure out what the final column was, and then state whether it's a tautology, a contradiction, or contingent. Uh, as long as your response is consistent with your final column, uh, I'm not going to penalize you for that because if you get 1001 and you say it's contingent, well, your output was 1001, so obviously you're going to think it's contingent. So, um, you know, you should be aiming for the right thing in the end, but when I mark, of course, I'm taking a look at your work and what you're saying based on your work. So let's take a look at this. Uh, P is 1100, zero, zero, so not P is going to flip the values, so not P is going to give 0011. Zero, zero, one, one. Uh, Q is 1010, zero, one, zero, so not Q is going to flip the values to get 0101. Zero, one, zero, one. P and not P, we did this one in class. Um, P and not P is always going to be false. It's a contradiction. Something cannot be blue and not blue at the same time. Uh, Q or not Q, this is always going to be true because at least one of Q and not Q will be true. Uh, either it's blue or it's not blue, that's always true. Um, this is saying P and not P or Q or not Q. So basically this is always saying in every line, it's either zero or one, zero or one, zero or one, zero or one, and in every case, this will be true. So the first line, the first answer is a tautology. Uh, P and not P or Q or not Q is a tautology. Okay, the second one, uh, A and B, arrow B and A. So A and B, this is just like our typical truth table for P and Q. This will give us a 1, 0, 0, 0. Uh, B and A is going to be the same thing as A and B. So you didn't have to do this one again, um, but you're free to uh, 1, 0, 0, 0. So when we do the arrow, we're going to get one arrow one in the first row, and in the second, third, and fourth row, we're going to get zero arrow zero, and all four of these will be true. So that's going to also be a tautology. Basically, what this one is saying is that if we have A and B, we're going to get B and A, and that's always going to be true. The last one, P if and only if not R, Exclusive or are if and only if not P. So I did want to have you use exclusive or in a truth table just to practice the truth values. Um, even though we don't translate this in English sentences um, too often, if at all. Okay, so not P and not R. We're just flipping some truth values here. So we just did this in the first part. So let me just fill those in quick. Um, P if and only if not R. So these are the same. Oh, sorry. So if and only if is true if the values are the same, and it's false if the values are different. So, for example, in the first row, um, P is 1, but not R is 0. 
So these values are different, therefore the output is zero. In the second row, um, P is true, but not R is one, or is also true. So they're both the same, therefore the output is one. Uh, in the second, sorry, in the third row, we have zero if and only if zero. In the fourth row, we have zero if and only if one. So in the third row, the values are the same as true. In the fourth row, the values are different. So it's false. Uh, when we take a look at the fourth, uh, the sorry, fourth column, sixth column, R if and only if not P, uh, we're actually going to get the same thing as P if and only if not R. So we're going to get 0, 1, 1, 0. And we can see by comparing uh, these two rows here. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. The values are the same in row 2 and 3, and the values are different in row 1 and 4. OK. So the final one, we're comparing these two columns. And what this says is that it's going to be true if the values are different, and it's going to be false if the values are the same. That's what exclusive or does. So in each of these rows, the values are exactly the same. Therefore, all of the outputs will be false. Therefore, uh, this final well-formed formula is a contradiction because all of the outputs are false. Okay, so that's truth tables. Uh, these formulas weren't too big, but again, uh, the bigger they get, the more tedious it is. It's not more difficult, it's just more tedious. So this was an exercise in uh, doing some operators, so I tried to give you practice with each of the operators here, negation, conjunction, disjunction, the conditional, biconditional, and exclusive or, and then interpreting what those ones and zeros mean in the final column. Okay, the last one, it's about joint entailment. I have the truth table laid out, but the first task here is to translate the sentences. So we can give these uh, some letters. So here we have a not, we don't want to include not in our translation, but if Kenny does not become a professional detective, he does not watch Knives Out. So Kenny becomes a professional detective, I call this D. Uh, Kenny watches Knives Out, I call this K. So if not D, then not K. If Kenny does not become a professional detective, then Kenny does not watch Knives Out. Okay, if Kenny saw Saw 7, so I call this S, so Kenny saw Saw 7, or Kenny saw Knives Out. Let's call that two. And C, which I'll call three, is gonna be Kenny will become a professional detective, so that's D, or Kenny watches Saw 7, which is S. So here are my three sentences. Uh, not D, arrow, not K, S or K, and then D or S. So, what I have to do now is I have to show that A and B jointly entail C. So this means that one and two arrow three, so when I say one and two arrow three, I'm talking about these formulas, but I'm just saving a little bit of space writing them. So one and two arrow three is a tautology. That's what I need to show with my truth table. So uh, I have in the truth table below, I have three here with D or S, I have two here with S or K, and I have one here with not D arrow not K. So we're just gonna go through this. This will take a little bit of time to fill in the values, but I'm just gonna uh, speed through this a little bit. So for D or S, this is going to be true if either D is true or S is true. So D is true in the first four rows. So D or S will be true in the first four rows. And then S is going to be true in row five and six. And then both of them are false in row seven or eight. Okay, uh, for S or K, uh, K is true in rows one, three, five, and seven. So I can fill in rows one, three, five, and seven. 
and then s is going to be true in rows one, two, five, and six. So we can fill those ones in, and then s and k are both false in rows four and eight. So I can do them row by row, but I just know the patterns of s and k, so I can fill them in this way. So you might do this in a different order as well. This is just how I set this up the first time. Okay, not d and not k. We need not d and not k to do not d, arrow not k. So not d is just going to flip the values. So not d is true in the first four rows, so it'll be false when we do not d. Uh, d is false in the last four rows, so not d will be true in the last four rows. Uh, k is true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. So not k will be false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true. So we just flip the order. K not d, arrow not k. Uh, it's going to be false when we have one arrow zero. So uh, one arrow zero happens in row five and row seven, as I've circled there. So it will be false in these two rows, and it will be true in every other row. Okay. So now we need to get one and two. So we're going to be comparing these two rows with the conjunction. So it's going to be true when s or k is true and not d arrow not k is true. So it'll be true in rows one, two, and three. And it'll be true in row six. And I believe that is it. Okay, finally, we now need to compare one and two and then row three, and we're doing the arrow. So we're going from right to left here. So first row is one arrow one, one and two arrow three. Then one arrow one, one arrow one, zero arrow one, zero arrow one, one arrow one, zero arrow zero, zero arrow zero. Uh, without writing them all out, if we take a look from one and two to three, we find just as we expect that we get true in every single row, therefore, this is fantastic. We got what we wanted. This is a tautology. So because this is a tautology, we've shown that A and B entail C. So if Kenny does not become a professional t detective, he does not watch Knives Out, and Kenny saw Saw 7 or Kenny watches Knives Out, then that entails that Kenny will become a professional detective or Kenny watches Saw 7. Okay. Uh, that's the assignment three solutions for learning and reinforcement. If you do have any questions about the solutions for the understanding and extension, feel free to email me or ask in office hours, and I'm happy to explain those to you. Um, but please check the written PDF first. Uh, that is it for me.